Hey everybody, today Rado talks through dogs, second edition. Now, this is going to be a follow-up to a video I filmed, gosh, it must be a couple of years ago, I think, uh, for a sweet, charming little worker placement slash pick up and deliver slash set collection game all about players running dog kennels and zipping around town in their trucks trying to rescue dogs uh, and rehome them. It was an incredibly charming, lovely, family-friendly kind of gateway game, and unfortunately at the time, there were only, I believe, in the first print run, 200 copies available in the whole world. And I just happened to have one, and I was able to do a run-through. Well, finally, at long last, after people waiting for years now to get their chance, Dogs is back, and it's on Kickstarter. It's already successfully hit its main goal, now it's shooting for stretch goals. And they actually sent me a prototype of the new version, so I could see for myself what the changes are, and kind of let you guys know. Now, the core of the game hasn't really changed at all. We are still driving around spending gasoline in our trucks to pick up dogs both uh, in the inner city and out in the countryside. Some of the dogs are sick and have to go to in the infirmary. Some of the dogs are, um, you know, a lot of them are strays, but some of them are lost and there's a reward you can get for picking them up. And uh, we pick them up, we put them in our truck, we bring them back home, we home them, we feed them. We also have to spend money uh, for more gasoline so we can drive around. We have to spend money to pay our employees so we can keep running the place. And the worker placement element of the game is very interesting as well because when we send our workers out here to do one of the actions, there's also a card draft going on. If I come to, here to Town Hall to spend money to uh, be able to get permission to build more kennels so I can hold more dogs, I also get to claim, in this case, three food or two money. So, I mean, basically I could get this for free if this is where I go first. Um, you know, or if I come over here to the warehouse, I can get this, which allows me to not have to pay my employees because they will volunteer their time. Or I can come over here to the dog fair and get two food or the opportunity to muscle in on a space where normally I can't go. So it's actually, it was always a really, really cool idea. Everybody has two workers provided they're willing to pay their employee if they've got the money. Otherwise, they've only got one worker themselves. And in addition to doing worker placement in the town hall, the warehouse, the pet shop, the vet's office, and the dog fair, you're also doing a car draft to give yourself extra power. And then after you're done with the worker placement, you fuel your truck back up. And once again, you go out and try to rescue some more pooches. So, nothing's really changed about the game. The board, I think, is overall a little bit nicer. It is nice to see everything in English now. And um, there are some changes that have been made. The, the fair is actually uh, fairly different. It's not just a bunch of, you know, because there are, you can actually, the dogs we find, we can sell to the dog fair or we can buy other dogs from the dog fair because there's a set collection element to this game as well. And probably the single biggest tweak or change to the game has to do with the way two-player works. This was a big complaint I had with my original prototype is that in the two-player game when you were driving around there just wasn't that much competition to pick up the dogs and players could just rake in tons of money and it really kind of weakened the overall economy. It made things too cheap. But now there are roadblocks that can randomly show up on the streets. And so if I want to for whatever reason um, drive down here to get this St. Bernard because I'm trying to collect a set of St. Bernard's because it would be worth a lot of points to me. Um, you know, I'd have to spend one gas and normally one gas and one gas. It would cost me three, but to go through these roadblocks takes two gas. So it would be one, two, three, four. So these roadblocks, which come out randomly every round, kind of create a maze that um, you know, means you'll have to drive around or you'll have to spend more gas than you normally would to kind of replicate um, you know, the competition you'd have with more players where um, you know, the dogs get gobbled up quick and you have to drive farther to get the dogs you want. Now, um, you know, there, there are fewer dogs on the board to begin with and you have to pay more gas to get around if there's a specific one you want. These work really nicely. I really like this. Um, system for the roadblocks. Another thing that I was talking to the developer and they're working about an advanced variant, which I haven't tried yet, but it has to do with the pet shop changing how you can spend money to get resources. I'm not really quite sure how that works, but I love the fact that, you know, at its heart, this is a light, family-friendly gateway game, um, which is huge appeal. I mean, who is not going to enjoy a game about trying to rescue wayward dogs and rehome them or return, reunite them with their owners? That's so beautiful. So it has a lot of curb appeal, uh, but it's a really light game as well. So I'm really 
excited about the fact that they are still tweaking some of the rules to have slightly more um, challenging variant, uh, where, where things get even tighter. Now, if I have one complaint about this, because overall, this is a big improvement. But the one thing that kind of bugs me about the game is the um, for two and three players, it reminds you right here that certain breeds are just removed. In um, you know, in a two-player game, or I'm, I'm sorry, um, you know, if you want to play with beagles, basically, you have to be playing four-player. They do not appear in a two- or three-player game. If you want to play with Yorkshire Terriers, well, they won't appear in a two-player game. And that's fine, but I think for a lot of people, you know, like, like folks like me and Jen, we have beagles. We love beagles. We would never want to play this game without being able to play the beagle. I mean, no offense to the Rottweiler or the, you know, the Golden Retriever or the German Shepherd. I mean, those are all lovely pooches too, but we want to play with beagles. Um, but the rules as they are preclude us from being able to do it. And it all has to do with this system where every round, there are going to be different um, dogs in demand at the dog fair, or different breeds of dog. And, you know, that's an important consideration for the overall balance of the game. But what I wish they had kind of done is, instead of just having these fixed cards that said, okay, well, this round, you know, these are the dogs that are in demand, and next round is going to be these, um, which then means, okay, well, because we're limited by these in a two-player game, well, um, you know, none of the two-player versions of these cards have beagles on them, so you can't have beagles in the game. I would have much rather, instead, drop the cards, create extra pieces like this and just randomly create a pool that you draw from every turn. Something like that. It's a minor complaint, but if you're dog lovers like me and Jen, and you know, if you are, that's maybe why you're interested in this game, it can be kind of disheartening to say, well, yeah, we want to rescue Border Collies because we have a Border Collie, or our kids love our Border Collie, but you know what? Uh, you can't play that in a two-player game. You have to play a, a three- or four-player game. It's a minor complaint on what is overall, I'd say, a big improvement in the game. And the number one improvement to the game is the fact that it's actually available. Um, so if you're interested in it, go check out the, uh, the Kickstarter campaign. You can hit the I up in the top right corner of the screen. Or go check out my original run-through because the core of the game has not changed. It's all about driving around. Um, you know, and and you know, this is a kind of introduction to resource management as a family friendly game. You got to spend money to get the gasoline. You need the gasoline to drive around. But you also need to spend the money to get the food to keep your pets fed, to get the, the pooches fed. You also need it for medicine because some of them come in sick and need to be healed in your infirmary, but you also need money to expand so you have more space to store. So it's a lovely little business economic simulation, um, but about just about the most wonderful theme in board games. And like I said, uh, check out my run through by hitting the eye so you can get a better idea of what the game plays like, or go check out the Kickstarter campaign. It seems to be doing pretty well. I'm very, very excited for the developers of the game. That's it, folks. That was a quick talk through of Dogs Second Edition. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye. Uh,